on Ala and actually welcome to go watch a movie. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was hello everyone and welcome in German. I've been practicing that. But welcome to Go Watch a Movie episode 110. Guten Tag. I'm Kelvin. And I'm Rob. Uh, today we are tackling an awesome little film. Not a little, I don't know. We've got a little Jojo Rabbit. Um, excited to get into that one because um, it's a little controversial, <laughs> which I love. Um, but uh, before we do that, a little bit of entertainment news. Daniel Craig, Mr. James Bond himself, reaffirms No Time to Die, the next Bond movie, is his last Bond. Now, he said this once before <laughs> with Skyfall, but, uh, you know, I think they backed the Brinks truck up to his house mm-hmm. and <laughs> said, come on, come on. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, how do you feel about him as Bond? I mean, I love him as Bond. I mean, he's great. I mean, eventually he's probably going to want to end. Yeah, because I mean, he's, he's, he's one of the more athletic Bonds. Okay. <laughs> That's what you want to say? Because the older ones didn't move as well. Brosman did. He's, but before he's, him, he's know. getting up there in age. He's older than you probably think. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's probably what he's thinking. I can't do this forever, you know? Um, Because he's, like, doing parkour and... As long as as they keep paying you, keep doing it, dude. As long as you can. (laughs) (laughs) Just just remember that dollar sign. But he's also a spectacular actor. Mm -hmm. You know, you see him on other things. Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. um, But there's other little movies he pops up in that are pretty good. Can't wait to see him in Knives Out um, with that Colonel Sanders accent. But so I don't know, man, I I would I want to see him keep going because that means we got to get adjusted to a new bond, probably a new storyline. You know, I Mm. I don't want that. I have connection issues. I can understand. I I see where you're coming from. But I do want (laughs) to see them take this character to a certain point because I don't want to see him drag it out and then do like movies that suck you know but just just to keep him in it you think he should die? I don't think he should die I just not, think not him but like the Bond series just go out quietly not, not necessarily I mean I think they should I mean I think it's popular enough that they should continue yeah. but I, I wouldn't mind seeing something new of course you know me but still yeah, I, I mean I a few 007 in this one yes so, so that could, we'll see how that goes <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just don't want to see him drag it out so far to the point where the movies start to become bad and you're like, you want to like forget three or four of them, you know, when the, when a new one that's good finally comes out. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Um, that will move us on to uh, TV series. Legendary Pictures is turning the great Sin City into a television series. What do you think? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I haven't watched this Watchmen one yet. I feel like it's amazing. Is it amazing? I can, I can vouch for it. I have seen the first four episodes of it, three, four episodes. It's it's amazing. Um, they're doing it justice. They're going a route that I didn't think they would, but they're doing it justice. I guess I could give it a try. But if they do a Sin City one, I want to see them do what they did with the first movie is keep it like just like the pages of the graphic novel. Yeah, I want to see the kill for was not my jam. Yeah, I don't not know as, about you, but not as good. I don't think. But I think if they could keep it, maybe I don't know. Maybe it's just that one story that's that's good. But I think if they could keep it as close to the graphic novel as possible, even if it maybe isn't going to be like the greatest show because they did that, I think staying true to the subject matter might be a wiser choice to also stand out from the crowd. Yeah, yeah. I I I think what made that first one so awesome was Marv. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And not to say that the second one was was like completely garbage, but he he was a big part of what made that first one so good. I can't put anything past him because television is so good right now. There's so many good shows. And with the success of shows like The Mandalorian and, and, you know, Watchmen's doing well. I'm I'm almost scared to like get into shows because I'm afraid I'm gonna become hooked and then I'm just gonna become like this person that just sits in front of the TV all the time. I already pretty much do with movies, but now I'm gonna be like just like I won't ever be able to be away from a screen. So I'll have movies and just TV and just, I'll just I'll be stuck. Well, that's not that's not necessarily a bad thing. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to get out every once in a while. Oh, that's what virtual reality is for, my friend. <laughs> 
of last but not least, Joker Two has been announced. Um, originally, this film was supposed to be a standalone, um, its own little universe pocket thing. But I guess with success, like a mm-hmm. billion dollars <laughs> um, yeah. for a rated R film and all its accolades that it's getting. Oh, what do you think? Man? They're not going to be able to top the first one. I don't think. Yeah. I, I think even though it was so similar to another movie, like I mentioned before, mm. I, I don't think they're going to be able to c- recreate the magic because I think a lot of it was was some of it was was shock for people because they didn't realize what they were going to go see. Yeah. And then, I mean, so th- that right there is a huge component of it. And I don't think they can shock us even more with another one. I think it's just going to be more of the same without really turn it up and if they do turn it up it'll it'll probably end up being goofy yes and, and it was perfect in its own little pocket yeah. world because now you you introduce a sequel now you have to go deeper into the batman mythos which is you know probably not great for what they built on that first movie mm-hmm. <laughs> Of course, we're not going to watch it, but yeah, I will too. But I feel like it's just a money thing, and I yeah. feel even though there's nothing wrong with money, you know, go get your mm-hmm. money if you want to go get your money. But man, I mean, make make more decisions based on like the art of it, you know. Exactly. The, the satisfaction of that film was just so so great. I don't I don't want to ruin it, but we'll see what happens. We will see, indeed. Um, that will bring us to let's discuss the showbiz. <laughs> Uh, Today, I wanted to talk about something that was inevitable for this podcast to talk about. I've been trying to avoid it, but it's in our faces all the time. Um, And one day, I fear we, too, will be um, a party to this thing. Cancel culture in the world. Um, So it's mostly a social media thing, but they have a large enough voice that they are making these big companies shaking their boots because back in the day um, you have a Sean Connery, for instance, do an interview with I forget the late, the great reporter's name who did the interview with where he's like, yes, I love to beat women. (laughs) I'm paraphrasing (laughs) of course, but (laughs) you know, she's like, so you once said you, uh, you don't mind hitting a woman. He's like, yes, uh, if a woman gets out of line, I don't mind giving her a good smack. Not, not close fist. Hope. Open hand, of course. You know, like it's, <laughs> that makes it better. <laughs> but if he would have done that now, he would have been quote unquote canceled by cancel culture. Um, because you know, they all the rights groups would have went to his Twitter page and went to Fox and Disney and all these people and said, No, he can't be in any more movies and all that jazz. But because it happened in his time, um, he he was acting until he was 90, you know. <laughs> Uh-huh. Um, whereas in this instance, Johnny Depp has lost a few films um, based on what we now know was incorrect fact. Um, and now yeah. and now they're going for now that the truth has come out. Now they want to cancel Amber Heard for going at Johnny Depp in the first place. <laughs> They want her out of the next Aquaman movie. What do you think, man? It's all chaos. It, it's it's all chaos. I don't know how to even how to even rationalize it. I mean, you could jump on either side. You could say it's it's silly. It, at the same time, you could be like, that's people taking power, you know, into their own hands if they see a, a wrong or mm-hmm. something they don't like. But they could also be turned around and used for complete evil. I mean, like just like you said, you know, somebody could. You, say something that's false and then people go jump all over it and have this crusade over something that isn't true and then afterwards realize how much damage they did yeah I mean, who knows who knows what you know that what actual could what could happen from that so i think uh i i, I see nothing wrong with fighting for uh for what's right but at the same time uh i think we should pick our battles carefully agreed like it it's <sighs> And these companies, yes, I know that a half a million people tweeting, you know, we don't need to use this item anymore. (laughs) It looks bad for your company. But sometimes you got to stand your ground. Like it's that's a half a million people out of a billion, you know, like 
that, that have this quote unquote yeah. opinion. And it's also sad because it's also based on money. It's, yeah. it's so it's, I mean, what's ruling the world? And we already know it's money, but geez, it's just like make it more obvious and more yeah. apparent. Now we have to make all these decisions based on just that, you know, on the dollar. Exactly. And, and, and I don't think that will ever stop. Like it's cause that's what moves the world. Like as much as we want to be artsy fartsy and say, you know, I love this because it speaks to me. If someone messes with the dollar, you know, of it speaking to you, that artsy fartsy means nothing anymore. It's, yeah. I, don't, I mean, I don't know. I mean, like, I don't know. This is a tough one. That's, I don't know how to really, uh, Come up with a definitive answer for that. I think uh, I think we're in trouble. Oh, yeah, wow. for for sure. It's uh, yeah. <sighs> but sorry, that was a somber somber. Uh, let's discuss the showbiz. But sometimes you got to get real. Um, yeah. <laughs> let's move on to trailers. You first or me, sir? Uh, you go right ahead. All right. I'm going to go with our old friend, Nicolas Cage. <laughs> All righty. Um, this one, this one, uh, <laughs> how do you describe it? Well, he has, uh, Nicolas Cage is playing a guy who neglects his wife. Um, and they call in like a handyman who... Is trying to get like I guess this handyman comes to fix something, but a hurricane happens, and they take him in, and the wife, of course, you know, okay. wants wants a little side action because this guy's young, he's buff, and Nicholas Cage is all grumpy and cage like, <laughs> but uh, yeah, she you know she she goes for him, and Cage is not happy. Uh, it's called Grand Isle. And then Cage Cages, basically. Hmm. <laughs> That's an interesting little trailer. I'm going to have to check this one out. I have not seen this one. <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, I, uh, there's a twist, though, I left out. Oh. Um, That's that, that they show in the trailer? Yes. Okay. Nicholas Cage wants the man to kill his wife. <laughs> Alrighty, well... <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it's intriguing. That's what caught my attention. But she is so manipulative and enticing. It seems like he may be changing his mind. So I don't know. Looks looks fun. What about yes. you? I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna check it out. All right, I'm gonna do something slightly different. I'm gonna go back in time, and I want to introduce a trailer from 2016. Ah, called, called the uh, the Similars. Oh, uh, I think it's a yeah, it's a foreign film. It's a Spanish language, so there's subtitles. Sorry, people, if you don't like reading subtitles, but uh, I definitely check this this uh, trailer out. And the reason why I want to bring it up, I'm not saying this is the, the greatest trailer ever. It's not, but it does something that I've noticed a lot of trailers recently aren't doing or are doing. I don't know how to say it. Basically, trailers now show too much. They show the entire movie. Mm-hmm. There's, you get the whole dang thing, and that's the biggest complaint that I see. It's like, oh man, you saw the whole movie in the trailer, and it's, it's ridiculous. So this one does a great job of not really showing you anything, because when you watch the movie, it's like mind blowing, and also I'm also kind of, you know, in- introducing this movie to people who haven't seen it. So I think it's great. It has a great twist in it, but at the same time, what's so amazing for me is that the trailer didn't give all that away. And the movie is basically dependent upon that twist. So the fact that, you know, a trailer from way back in the day, not too long ago, can do that and still have a great movie that, you know, has has had some acclaim yeah. is, you know, that's a good thing. So so all for those sure. trailer, for all those trailer makers out there, it, you know, take note. You don't have to show every single thing. You don't have to give away your entire movie. You can be subtle and still draw people in and show and have a great film. Yeah. I like so, okay. The similars. Ah, is that so? Is it? Is it okay? Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna check that. I'm gonna just watch the trailer. <laughs> watch both. Watch the trailer and then watch the movie and be surprised. For sure. For sure. And you said this one's from uh, 2016. Yep, 2016. 
similar. I think it is well worth it. Um, and that will bring us to Jojo Rabbit. Watch bot if you would not mind. Jojo is a lonely German boy who discovers that his single mother is hiding a Jewish girl in their attic. Aided only by his imaginary friend, Adolf Hitler, Jojo must confront his blind nationalism as World War II continues to rage on. It stars Taker Waititi, Scarlett Johansson, Sam Rockwell, Thomasin McKenzie and Roman Griffin Davis as Jojo. Thank you, Watchbot. Um, so... First question I want to ask you before we dive into this, this this little this little film, um, did you ever have a imaginary friend? I knew you were going to ask me that, and I did not. <laughs> I tried to make I tried to make up one, uh-huh. but it just never really stuck or worked out. It was just like just ridiculous, you know, like it was just playtime or something. But it wasn't like a real imaginary friend. Gotcha. A good wholesome, you know, regular imaginary friend. Never had one, no. and, I, and I'm, I am so envious of JoJo. Even if it's Hitler, I would, I, I take him, <laughs> take him in a minute, because that just has to be awesome. <laughs> oh man, what do you, what do you think? It was like, did you have you? You must have had lots of active friends then. Yeah, like, I, had, I had a decent. I had a decent amount of friends in the neighborhood we all played, but just never, never had a, never had an imaginary friend. Okay, well, yeah. I, I mean, I, I had a good imagination. I imagined crap all the time. You know, like, yeah. You know, the floor was lava, and the cushions were rocks, and jumping all around, and doing all that kind of stuff. But as far as an actual imaginary friend, nah. The, the problem, I think, the the thing is like the imaginary friends normally come to the losers. <laughs> And you clearly weren't a loser. I I am I I was and still am, but I don't think that's it. I don't think that's it. Hmm. I'm trying to help here. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. Well, I had I had a couple. Um and some people call, would call it schizophrenia. I think I was diagnosed. But <laughs> we had lots of adventures. Um and they kept me coming. I think I had them way too long. You ever seen that movie Drop Dead Fred? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh I think I might were, <laughs> were similar to him and I had him way too long until so, like to the point where like I was out front one day playing some kind of adventure with my imaginary friend. And then the next day at school, um, <laughs> they were like, what are you doing? <laughs> Like, what do you mean? We saw you like kicking and punching the air. <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> is that not something we do? In- <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh- <laughs> as long as you're not still doing it now, you're fine. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> Jojo Rabbit. Um, very much like I said, uh, he he does not fit in. Um, as much as he wants to, he's a runt. Uh, he's kind of awkward, <laughs> but he wants to desperately fit in um, by even blindly. Some might say wants to fit in, um, but he has a very special <laughs> imaginary friend uh, that I think is manifested because of that blind faith. Um, Adolf Hitler. When you, when you, I think this was the trailer so far. When you first saw this, what did you think, man? The the Hitler, the, the trailer or the or the Hitler in the movie. Hitler in the movie. Hitler in the movie. I, think, yeah. I didn't really think a whole. I mean, I already knew it was going to be Hitler, so it wasn't really a surprise. Well, if maybe I, if I, guess, I had, uh, I guess in general, like when you see a kid have an imaginary friend. <laughs> I figure it's fine. I don't know. It means Germany. It's a little kid. He's in. He's in. He's a you know a little Nazi. So why wouldn't he have? <laughs> why, why wouldn't he have Adolf Hitler as a as an imaginary friend? It makes sense. And I like I like this version of Adolf Hitler. It's not really. It's not really Adolf Hitler. Yeah. It's like a little kid's version of Adolf Hitler. So. But he did have Adolf traits. <laughs> like, okay. I don't, I don't know the man, so I can't. Really, I can't really do. I mean, I know him from history, but. <laughs> You know the the angry outburst is what I'm referring to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, um, but uh, yeah, it, it was it's it's a little for me at least it's a little shocking. <laughs> I don't think you know. I thought for a second it might be inappropriate. 
Yes. It's like too soon or something. But then I'm thinking, I mean, once it starts, it's so, it's so, I mean, satire is great. It's so goofy. Yes. It's it just, you, it, that, it melts away all that. This isn't, this shouldn't be, we shouldn't be watching this. This isn't, who made this? They should be arrested. You, you that all that drops away and you're like, you start laughing because it's that <laughs> well done. Yes. So I don't I think it's, I think it's right. I mean, we just got something similar. Like they were making fun of Nazis. And what movie was that? Was that the, the one with the, raw, the walrus? The, uh, uh, the Nazi party, the Nazi. Oh, uh, the Kevin Smith's yeah, uh, yoga Kevin, hosers. Yeah, yeah, yoga hosers. Yeah. What was it? Was it yoga hosers or the other one? Tusk. Yeah, was it Tusk? I can't remember. Anyway, one uh, of those. Yoga hosers had the uh, Bratzies. No, oh, the Bratzies. Yeah, it was, the, it was the other. I'm thinking of Tusk. Because not the Nazi party. But, I mean, that seemed slightly inappropriate yet. I mean, I don't I don't feel like the the funny factor was quite there as it is with this one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> was that your imaginary friend? <laughs> you get back in the brain. <laughs> um, I, I, I attended. My mind went almost instantly to Mel Brooks, and this felt like a very evolved Mel Brooks. Not taking anything away from the great comedic genius that is Mel Brooks, but this felt like a very evolved Mel Brooks movie. And I don't know if you've watched many Mel Brooks movies. I've seen a couple, but not not really. A huge but fan. He, <laughs> <laughs> like History of the World, um, uh, all those styles. Like it, it, it had that feeling for me. But it wasn't like in in the realm of joke, 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 joke. Yeah, I felt like those were more just jokey, just like goofy joke fun. Have not really have a point. This one I felt like was goofy jokey yeah. fun, but we got a point. We have several points. I, I felt the same satire satire that you would get from Mel Brooks Brooks film in some. Uh, yeah, so that's what. Yeah, that's why I said evolve because it's like Mel Brooks was just like yeah, joke on joke on joke on joke on joke, and there was no real, um, you know, mm-hmm. uh, like you said, no no point to it. <laughs> I don't want to diss Mel Brooks. I love his films, but uh, yeah, this this one definitely had a point. It definitely hit home. Definitely. Tried to pull on your heartstrings a bit. I don't know if it did for you. Well, yeah. There's a, <laughs> somebody's hanging there. You got you gonna feel something. Uh, so overall, th- or my overall thoughts, but general thoughts, sir. General thoughts, great. I mean, I can't. It just I can't say enough good stuff about it. It's one of those movies that once again stands out amongst all the other ones. We got we get lots of comedies, lots of whatevers, but this one just stands out and just screams, watch me. Mm-hmm. There's like you can't turn away from it. It's so goofy, so weird. Almost like you shouldn't be watching it, but you do, and you shouldn't be laughing it, but you can't help it. And then everybody just joins in. It's just a great time. I mean it's got a good good plot, good story, good acting. Uh the characters are fun. Adolf is hilarious. I mean I really like the the heartfeltness that they they give you towards the end, they bring it all together perfectly. There's I have no complaints, not a single one. Yeah, same here. Um, I at first um, had my uh, well, Mister T Kai Wit Witty with Oh God, <laughs> I'm turning into a transformer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Samuel would wiki. We need your help. Uh, no, but he he is a brilliant writer, brilliant actor, very funny. Um, he did Thor, the last Thor movie, um, directed that, wrote that. He did the Let's What We Do in the Shadows, which is a hilarious mockumentary that follows vampires around. He he's a genius, so I never should have had my doubts, mm. but I did, <laughs> and I don't know why I did. Because I saw the trailer and I love the trailer, but I went into it like, yeah, whatever. You know, this is going to be what I'm looking for. But it was. It, it, it gave me everything I needed. I didn't expect it to go where it went because uh, the trailer, this is one of the good trailers that does not show you where it's going at all. Mm-hmm. It looks like you're just going to be having fun with JoJo and his buddy Hitler, you know? <laughs> uh, but. Yeah, that, but that if if I had one critique, that's my only critique. Um, and this is, I think, this is okay to say in this particular context because we're talking about a specific thing. If not, that cancel culture conversation may be applied right now. But Robert, 
I wanted more Hitler. So did I. I. I just said it before. I want my very own imaginary friend, and I don't mind if it would be Adolf Hitler. <laughs> I think that would be okay. And he did such a good job in all the scenes he, re- he was in, and I was waiting for more and more and more, but I guess maybe he didn't want to overdo that aspect. Right. But, but there's there so much more in the film to give us, though. I mean, that's yeah. why he, he was just there for bits and pieces. But so much so much was coming out of this thing. It was great. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. And, and the actors, let's get into the actors. I was, I was going to ask you about Sam Rockwell, if you enjoyed his performance, because I know he sometimes annoys you. Sam Rockwell? Mm-hmm. I love Sam Rockwell. <laughs> Is that, I thought you didn't like Sam Rockwell. No, 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 no. <laughs> I I think Sam Rockwell is fantastic. Um, this, is, this is the same guy that was in... Moon? The, no, well, yeah, he was in Moon, but he was the same guy that was in... Oh, my God, what was the movie with the giant? The Jaegers. Uh, Pacific Rim. Didn't you... Didn't you didn't no, you no, no. That's... Uh, What's the guy? The guy Who from, am I thinking of? You Who think Charlie getting? Day. Oh, there he is. <laughs> there he is. They're super similar. What? So, except for Rock, Sam is a little more grounded. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> have you not seen the Green Mile? I have seen the Green Mile. Where he plays Billy the Kid? Yeah. Have you seen Moon? <laughs> yes, I love Moon. I have Moon. And you're telling me this guy. I'm, ask, I'm asking you, <laughs> if, you th- if he annoys you because he's similar. To the guy no, uh, so, so I think Sam Rockwell is one of the best actors of our time. I think he's underrated, but he can do comedy. He can go serious. I th- he's just—he's not underrated. He gets the accolades he deserves. But uh, the three billboard, three billboards, and uh, what's my call it? I wanted to hate his guts mm-hmm. because he made me feel that way, you know. <laughs> and then in this one, at first, you know, I—I I pitied him. You know, but even even that became a turnaround like it was it was and 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 to get the pull off at the end, the the reveal at the end that is great with him. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the, The last way we see him and the second to last way we see him both are fantastic you know yeah, i love him uh, all the way through the movie yeah same here great. like it was just oh man i can't believe you think charlie day they put a put a side by side of them they're similar they're brothers or cousins as far or as looks or acting uh looks okay. i was basing it on looks okay i'm not saying they're the same act they're the same type of actors gotcha okay that's right Whew. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You can calm down. Put, now. I was gonna put a Charlie Day soundbite and then <laughs> sound bite No, they don't. No, they I look. Like so, they, you guys, they, Robert, do you, smoke do you not? Do you not think they look similar? They do. They do. Okay. Now that you mention that, right. they, okay. Um, they just I'm so sorry far for, in my head, I've I'm never so, put them together. <laughs> I'm sorry for the confusion. I know. <laughs> but I will say, on mm-hmm. a different note, Scarlett Johansson. Blew my mind. <sighs> I, I'm in love. <laughs> Blew my mind. I did not. I did not see those those comedic comedic moments coming out of her. You can call me anytime. <laughs> Sorry. No, I agree. Uh, aside from the the fact that she's gorgeous, we're gonna slide slide that to the side because that shouldn't be. Uh, part of the amazing it's job. That yeah, it's funny did. that she actually, it's funny that she mentions that in the movie too. She does. Um, but but yeah, you're right. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see any. I think it's because I didn't I didn't see it coming. Yeah. Last last few films I think I've seen with her, she's always serious or straight faced or she's sad. She's only so one note. Yeah. And and, and, this, and it's a good note. I'm not taking anything away from her. Mm-hmm. But she sold so much range in this that father scene. Mm-hmm. She did come dangerously close to doing something bad. Oh, blackface? Yes. <laughs> it was a beard. It was dangerously close, though. I'm like, because the first thing I thought was, what? Wait, oh, it was a beard. <laughs> yeah, blackface now. Okay, Nazis are fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, one of our co-stars once did uh, blackface, and everybody was okay with it, including me, because it was hilarious. <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. Um, but speaking of which, this was like a 
Avengers reunion. <laughs> Mm. Uh, Sam Rockwell was in Iron Man. She's, of course, Black Widow. Um, I'm missing some stuff. There was more. Oh, him, he, Hitler himself. He is Krog. He plays Krog. Of course, he did, you know. But uh, yeah, I mean, she, yeah, she, I agree. She was fantastic. What do you think of JoJo? I love JoJo. JoJo did a really good job. He had a few good moments in there, too, that were humorous. And he played the the sweet, sensitive kid fairly well. I don't know about the angry Nazi quite so much. I didn't really feel, feel that was believable. But that, that was a point for that. Yeah, it, yeah, it fit. And it was, you know, it had a place, I guess. Yeah. And Rebel Wilson was in there. Did you enjoy Rebel Wilson's performance? Or was it just, eh, she was there? Uh, I don't know what it is about her. It's, it, it feels like she tries too hard. Yeah, I think she kind of fit in this movie, though. I mean, mm-hmm. the over the over the top ness of it fit her. Mm-hmm. So I, I think it was fine. I don't think it really took away she, from it at all. She pulled me back to the Mel, Mel Brooks thoughts. Every time I saw her, she was that always a joke where everyone else around her is, you know, mixing it in. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, she, her character was, was hilarious. Like I, I laughed quite a bit. Uh, and, and this was one of the first movies in a long time where the theater was laughing out loud uh, together. Like I've been to a lot of movies, but this one was like, people were, it was, there was, of course we're going to get late and a lot of people have seen it, but there were about, you know, 18, 19 people in the, in the, in the theater and everyone the, the every note hit you know everyone was laughing together yeah, so good. Every, yeah everyone enjoyed it where, where i was at too it was weird there's a lot of older older people i didn't expect so many older people to be mm-hmm. there just because of the subject matter and <laughs> whatnot but, back. yeah but it just I like maybe they maybe they need the healing more so than you know the young folks Oh, I remember when I punched that little mustache <laughs> bastard in the face. <laughs> that old or not that old? Um, that old, yeah. Both, I mean, the wide range. I mean, old enough that, you know, you have to wait, you know, politely as they make their way down the stairs. Oh, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, what did you think of Sam Rockwell's performance? I liked it. I liked okay. uh, the the humor in the very beginning, the over the top ridiculousness of it, and then he goes to that you know strong sensitive type towards the end. Yes. So I mean, he showed his range and and slightly homosexual there. Yeah, that was totally fine. And it, again, it made it made sense with what they yeah. were doing. Totally yeah, it was so so yeah, so over top masculine. Everyone needs to be that, but you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> everything that's in front of your face is not always what's in front of your face. So, um, let's get to Adolf. Mind fear. What do you think? You know, I, I can't, I can't think of anything negative to say. Mm-hmm. I thought. Like I say, he's just—he's almost in a weird sort of way. The way I like Apple from that. Uh, I can't. Once again, I'm going to go blank on the name of the movie. We watched it. Uh, the one that's supposed to be like uh, uh, taken from the '80s, and it's got the you know guy with the one eye and all the crazy people riding around on bikes for no reason. Oh, uh, something kid. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. That one. Yeah. <laughs> for the same reason why I love Apple in that one is the reason why I think I love. I can't believe I'm about to say I love Adolf, but the same reason why I love Adolf. Say it. <laughs> Adolf in this movie. It's just, <laughs> for some reason, there's something so goofy, and I don't, I don't want to say cute, but it's like adorable, like how goofy and childish and, you know, immature he is, yet at the same time relatable. Like, you can kind of you know, get that he's like the teenage or like the, the yeah, I guess he's a teenager, teenage version of like Adolf in that kid's head or whatever. Yes. But yeah, it just makes sense to me. And it was for me, it was great. And, and I will add to that everything you mentioned, but also on top of those those traits, he he also had the Adolf rev up moments that I loved. Mm-hmm. Like when he's really making a point, he gets into that. <laughs> for any Germans listening, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> hey, but you know what I mean, like. Yeah. He, he gets to the finger wave and he did that brilliantly and then he'll go right back and do it. Now, now get right out there, knucklehead, or you know whatever. Mm-hmm. 
and it was great. I mean, when he told him the story about the rabbit, it's like the noble rabbit. No, it's like what in the world? It doesn't make any sense from him, but at the same time, it does. I don't know. There's some weird balance thing there going on that I can't describe. That outcome wasn't great. <laughs> after that, rabbit. You, you know what? You know, he was fine afterwards. He was. He had a in scar. fact, it made him a better person. He had a scar and a limp, and he was a better person. So yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I, I uh, any high points for you like that super stood out for you? Um, well, the highest, the the biggest shocker was obviously in the the, the town hall. I won't say anymore. I yeah, know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But then outside of that, pretty much anything with Hitler. That was scene just was like, so beautiful, man. Beautiful and sad at the same time. Yeah. What they did with the houses after that. Mm-hmm. Oh, touched me. Sorry. <laughs> did, did you want to touch on the other person that might be in the house, or you want that to be a secret? Uh, I don't want to spoil anything because that that was a, a, a nice shock for me. Mm-hmm. I didn't see that coming at all. Like, like from the tra- like I said, from the trailer we watch, I love trailers like this, and movie uh, companies should take note from this mm-hmm. like because this like i said i thought this was going to be the the adventures of jojo and hitler but the, right. the route they took in a good way i know? think it's i think it's like right up there with things like uh swiss army man i mean mm-hmm. that was super surprised like a super surprise too in a good way so i think it's it's going to go right it's definitely going to go in my collection because it's it's that good yeah, and I'm so happy we got it. And I wish we get these things first run because we would have, of course, done this a lot sooner. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's um, I, I I love so much of this movie. There's but the part that got me, I love throwbacks, and um, of course there was. <laughs> I don't know if I should spoil anything because it's so awesome. The Sam Rockwell moment um, that he that that is uh, hinted at early on, but then actually gets to actually happens. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. That made me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it, there's so so many good things in this movie. So many good great actors in this movie. Um, the best, the kid's best friend was mm-hmm. simply hilarious. Like. <laughs> Little Butterball that had all the best lines. <laughs> yeah, he did have some good ones. Um, but yeah, I I cannot recommend this enough. But yeah, it's it's yeah, I can't recommend this movie enough. Uh, I say go watch for sure for me. Yep, um, definitely go watch. Go watch again and yeah. again because it's it's great fun. I haven't had that much fun in a movie in a while. You want something original? Um, yeah, I have no reason to complain that it's not happening because this was great. And I'm lucky. I'm not lucky. I'm happy that nobody has been, at least that that I've seen, has been bitching about. Well, they, they were over advertising it and like the trailer, like this is satire. They want everybody mm-hmm. to know right off the bat. You know, we're mm-hmm. not. You know, glorifying anything evil. We were just as funny. Yes. We we're making fun of stuff. Have fun. So I think, I think I was kind of annoyed when I first was watching the trailer because they kept saying that. I'm like, I know, I get it. And then <laughs> when it with the movie, I then I understood because they had to, you know, make sure yeah. they were covering their bases because the world has changed slightly. For sure. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes. Um, seventy nine percent fresh tomato meter. That's out of two hundred and seventy nine. Ninety six percent audience score out of about three thousand. I think it's like I want to know who like the four percent were. Like I want to know what they thought when they walked out of the movie. Like that was whole, like too many Nazi. Like what was the like was it not funny enough? Idiots. <laughs> I don't, I don't say that. But I'm just wondering. Like I, I'm curious as to what they thought made that movie not good. I, 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 so if you see the movie and you think it's not good, let us know why. Because I yeah. would love to. I would love to hear your uh, your opinion. I want to know. Yeah, I want to know your problem with this movie as well. Because, um, yeah, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where you can find us? You can find us at GoWatchMovie dot com, the one stop shop for all things entertainment. You can find us on. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, under Go Watch a Movie. Uh, anywhere a podcast can be played, should be played. You can find us there too. And yeah, that's about it. 
Um, I'm Kelvin. And I'm Robert. Go watch a movie. And help me, little buddy. Thank <laughs> you.